Well, hello and welcome to Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr Shelton. Behind me is an image of what I was like in December when I fell off my bike and I broke my wrist. It was extremely painful and it made me think, pain's real. But not everyone would agree with that statement. And that's what we're going to think about today. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue with our thoughts on Buddhism. And last time we looked at the life of Prince Siddhartha and the Enlightenment. And today we're going to look at part of what he discovered uh, when he discovered the Four Noble Truths. Now, if you're praying... Okay, so this is your time to go and grab your book, go and grab a piece of paper or a pen, because here's our cheesy intro music. Great. Well, welcome back. Um, you've seen this image before because, well, I showed you it last time and the time before. I'd like you to identify what events being shown here in the Buddha's life. And can you identify A, B, C and D, the characters in A, B, C and D? So just pause me now and have a quick look at that. Perfect. So I hopefully you've identified this is the four sites, the four things that the Buddha saw. And hopefully you've identified that A is uh, the, the corpse, the, the dead man. You've got B, which is the holy man. You've got C, which is the old man and D, which is the sick man. And those are really important parts of the four sites. Now, you may remember with the Enlightenment that we started to talk about the middle way. I found this advert on the TV a couple of years back, thought it was brilliant. So, without any further ado, let's watch this. What's wrong with the middle? The middle's great. It's never too hot or too cold, far too big or way too small. The middle isn't too sweet or too sour. It's not a marathon, it's not a sprint, it's not a fanatic and it's not a slob. A famine or a feast. It's not skinny marge, and it's not full fat butter. The middle is the best of both. The happy place. Churned like butter with only half the saturated fat, Clover is proud to be smack bang in the middle. Clover, it's great in the middle. Okay, hope you found that quite uh, enlightening, pun intended, because the concept there of the middle way is perfect for what we're looking at with Buddhism. It's not too much and it's not too little. It's not too fat, it's not too skinny. Let's not go there about my physique. But I am doing Joe Wicks, so hopefully for those of you that see me, you might see a slightly smaller Mr. Shelton next time, but let's not go there. So our title today is What Are the Four Noble Truths? What are the Four Noble Truths? And we're going to explore how the Four Noble Truths explain suffering. Our literary objective today is to read for meaning. It's going to be a good outcome if you can retell the Four Noble Truths and other, other Buddhist rules. It's going to be great if you can explain the rules that you remember. And even better if you can evaluate uh, the truths of uh, the Buddhist truths, should I say. And so you'll be able to make judgments on whether you think that they are good truths or not. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, you've seen a little media clip, we've got a marketplace activity where you're going to be extracting some information uh, from below and then you've got a reflection question uh, and a little mix and match activity to end with. So in the description below you will see uh, a link to the Google Drive. I'd like you to access that because in that you will find uh, four bits of information or even five bits of information in one document about the Four Noble Truths. 
um, I'd like you to go through those. There's some questions at the end of each of them, and I'd like you to work those through. So I'm going to hand over to you guys now. So look in the link in the description, load up the work, and give it a go. There's three or four questions on each of those sheets, and this should take you about 20 minutes or so. This is probably your main activity, or one of your main activities during this lesson. Okay, so I'm just returning back to this because it's as good as image in any, just to talk about those four noble tools a little bit more that you've just been looking at. Um, let's just unpack those for a moment because actually they're, they're fairly logical to some extent. So the first one is to accept that suffering exists. Okay, if I didn't accept that I'd broken my arm, which we talked about at the start, then I'd never have gone to hospital, I'd never have got treatment about it. Um, and I would have just been going around in pain, but I wouldn't have accepted it was pain because I wouldn't have accepted I was suffering. So that's the first one, suffering exists. Uh, and the Buddha says you've got to accept that. Remember, he lived in a palace all of his life and he'd never really experienced suffering because he was shielded from it, he was hidden from it. So the first thing that the Buddha says that you need to do is to accept that there is suffering in the world. You might say that's obvious, but that is the first noble truth. The second noble truth is that we suffer because we want something we don't have. We suffer because we want something we don't have. So, for example, during lockdown, lots of people suffered because they really wanted a McDonald's, or in my case, a Chinese. And it was all I would think about. Um, well, it wasn't all I would think about, but it was a lot. So I'd be like, mm, do you fancy a Chinese tonight? I'd say to my wife, and she'd say, well, I do, but where are you gonna get one from? And I couldn't. Or, you know, then, then McDonald's was opening and I was like, oh, should we go and get McDonald's? And she was like, well, you can if you want to queue for two hours. And I thought, mm, fair point. So we suffer because we want something we don't have. OK, so think about anything that you might want. Now you're suffering. OK, so that latest iPhone or that that latest gadget or that latest chocolate that you wanted to buy. Thinking about it. Well, it ain't going to help you because you're now suffering over it. So the third noble truth the Buddha comes up with is that uh, you need to let go of that suffering. OK, you need to let go of that suffering. If you let go of that suffering, then you won't suffer anymore. So the first noble truth is suffering exists. Second noble truth is because we suffer because we want something we don't have. Third noble truth is just get over it. Just so give up on that McDonald's, give up on that Chinese. Just realize you don't have it and actually you'll be a lot happier. Um, there's some problems with that because if I just accepted that I was, you know, the, the argument about my arm is that I suffer because I want my arm to be better. So if I give up wanting my arm to be better, then I won't suffer anymore. That is a slight problem when it comes to the Four Noble Truths, potentially. However, you can think about some things like maybe addictions or cravings that you could see how that might hang together. And then the fourth noble truth is follow the middle way. That basically shows, as we looked at our clover advert earlier, that if you don't strive for too much, insofar as you don't want too much, then, and you're not needing anything because you've just got enough, then you're going to be fine and you're not going to be craving anything. Therefore, you're not going to be suffering because you're not going to need to give up wanting anything. And that really is what the four noble truths are. Whether they work or not, well, that's something for you to think about. But they are what the Four Noble Truths are that you've just been doing some work on. So you should now be able to retell what the Four Noble Truths are and some of the other, other Buddhist rules as well. And hopefully you can explain the rules that you remember. So if you look here, we've done our uh, media clip, we've done our marketplace. We're going to have a little bit of a reflection question. But before we do that, I want to look at some of the Buddhist teachings. So what we've got here is we've got some of the quotes from uh, Siddhartha Gautama, or the Buddha. And I'd like you to choose two of those, and I'd like you to identify if you think that they are good or they're bad thoughts. So I'd like you to choose two of those and identify if you think that they are good or they're bad thoughts. Let's do that now, pause me now. Okay, so lastly then, uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, we're going to do a quick mini write. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to explain uh, why the Buddha's life and teachings influence people today. We'll explain why the Buddha's life and teachings influence people today. So to do that, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go through these five statements behind me, uh, writing in as much detail as you can. Please note, number three you've just done, so you've got that information already. Hopefully number four has inspired you to, to think a little bit more about that as well. And uh, you're gonna be tying this 
completely back to what we've learned about Siddhartha Gautama by now. So uh, pause me now and give that a go. Beautiful. Okay, so uh, just to conclude then today, we said our learning objectives were that we'd explore how the Four Noble Truths explain suffering. Um, so hopefully now you've got a really clear idea on that and uh, you've tied that into some of the other Buddhist teachings or rules as well. Uh, great if you can explain the things that you remember and even better if you can evaluate the Buddhist truths as well. Do you think those Four Noble Truths really work or not? So... I'm going to leave it there today. I know it was only a short one in terms of my input, but you've done a good lot of learning there. So take care of yourself, stay safe, wash hands, God bless, and I'll see you soon for the next bit of Buddhism.